The Problem of Pain. Hello, I'm author Kendall Bryan Hunter. I wrote this book called Consider My Servant Job, and this is Come Follow Me, Get to the Point, where I always show up, I always come prepared, we never take roll, and it's bring your own refreshments. Aha, uh -huh. tricked you, COVID-19 test. Came back negative, but you didn't see that coming. Although it's kind of appropriate when you think about this, uh, we're discussing the book of Job and the problem of pain and think about what the past couple of years in COVID-19 have done to us. That makes the book of Job very relevant. Like I said, I've written an entire 204-page book on Job. I could drag this out for three hours. However, this is get to the point, so I'm going to try and stick to my outline and just read it really quickly to hit the, uh, hit the high points and, like I said, get to the point. Background. This is set in the Fertile Crescent somewhere. No one exactly knows the origin of it, and it's similar to some other uh, stories you have in the area. It's a bit like uh, Noah and Adonapishtim in the Epic of Gilgamesh. There's parallels. This doesn't necessarily mean it's a false story. It gets con it's been confirmed by Revelation and the Doctrine and Covenants, and Joseph Smith quoted from the Book of Job 46 times during his ministry. You can double-check that on the BYU Scriptures app. Um, but what it is, it just really doesn't... Uh, the location and setting doesn't mean a whole lot. This is a philosophical book, and like when you uh, read Plato or other books, it just doesn't matter the setting because the ideas are eternal. The situation is eternal. It's a common problem we have across common areas. The problem of pain and suffering and how you deal with pain and what's going on there. So, point two, the players. It's God. You have the uh, children of God. Uh, Joseph Smith translation changed that from sons of God to children of God, and that seems to be a congregation in heaven. Uh, but I'll get to that a little bit later in the doctrinal section. You have the devil, you have Job, you have Job's wife, and you have uh, you also have his children, and you have his three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, and then the last one is Elihu, who's a bit of a t younger tag-along. Now here's the scoop. Very simple. Job's a righteous person. God allows him to suffer. His three friends have a protracted argument with him. His wife gets mad at him. God steps in, resolves the issue, and blesses Job more than he was in the beginning. That's the point of the book. Very simple. Uh, so here's the doctrine I'll ask. Well, first of all, when you read it, uh, keep, past your, keep, keep in mind that you're reading a poetic book. And it's also uh, a poetic book written in Hebrew, translated into King James English, uh, Shakespearean English. Yeah, there's going to be some problems, and it, but if you habituate yourself to what you're reading and think about it and uh, look at words that you don't understand, for example, the word reins, R-E-I-N-S, it actually means kidneys. It's uh, Think of the word renal. That'll help get past one of the barriers you have with this book. Okay, so here's the doctrine. First of all, you have the doctrine of upstairs, downstairs. You have the heavenly realm and you have the earthly realm. And that's like what you're taught in the endowment, is that the two things are going on, and we just see the earthly realm, and here and there the veil gets thin, and we can see into, peer into the heavenly realm. But keep, keep in mind that both things are going on. You have the issue of God's permissive will. God gives us agency. God allows the devil his agency. Uh, Everyone, this is a place where people are exercising their agency, and it's a way to test ourselves. Okay, how do you respond to pain? What are you going to do with your agency? How are you going to hurt people? Are you going to falsely accuse people? Um, that's one of the tests of mortality. Another one, uh, C, is what's the response to suffering? How has Job's response compared to other people's response? And what was Christ's response to suffering as he atoned? Think about that. Uh, I want to talk about a verse, uh, Job 4, verse 7, where, it's, where it talks about the law of the harvest. And there's a logical error known as affirming the consequent. If you're, if you're righteous, you'll be blessed. If you're wicked, you will be cursed. But it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're suffering doesn't mean that you are, you are wicked. That's a logical error. Another way to think about it is this way. If it, if it rains, the ground will be wet. Well, I went outside and saw the ground was wet wet, therefore it rained. Well, no, there could be a leaky faucet, someone could be watering the lawn. It's the same thing with this. It doesn't necessarily entail that, uh, <coughs> that uh, something uh, wrong is going on when you, uh, when you have suffering or uh, when it's going on. And that's the, one of the main problems. The things are logical. They're making these illogical a a assertions. Okay, Job 13, 15. I talk about it in my book more plug, plug. Remember, 24 hours, and uh, we're going to be teaching Sunday school, so you can get an electronic copy of it. So, uh, Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
Do you have that type of face where, where, where you let God do uh, nasty things to you, trusting in Christ? But that's, that's a question you have to ask on your own. Um, another thing, too, is uh, the, the famous chapter that's in Handel's Messiah, chapter 19. I know that my Redeemer live. That's interesting. That's, there's ancient Christians. They had, a faith, had faith in the resurrection. They had faith in the atonement. They wanted a bodily re resurrection where they could look God and see him face to face. That's something that's really lost from the Bible. That was one of the plain and precious things taken from the Bible was uh, lost its understanding of Christ and the resurrection, but it's retained in the book of Job and also in the book of Isaiah, which we'll get to when it comes up, Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, here's another thing to think about that. Uh, think about is uh, Job 23, verse 4. Uh, Job wanted to order his case before God. He's telling God, I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll more than happy build a, build a case. If you want to argue about this in a uh, courtroom type setting, let's go ahead and do this because I, I think I have a good standing. I can make a good argument. We uh, sometimes shy away from that, but uh, no, that seems how, how Job responded. He was willing to defend himself against false accusation, uh, slander, etc. Um, so uh, the next big point is the doctrine of premortality. Now, at the end of the, uh, there's a round robin discussion at the end. Uh, God, uh, uh, Yahweh steps in, Jehovah, and he asks Job those questions. You know, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when the morning stars uh, shouted for joy and sang together? And Joseph Smith uh, consistently taught that, that uh, uh, that just because you, uh, or, okay, excuse me, sorry, skip my, skip my brain, got a little bit ahead of myself, that uh, the, these terms actually refer to pre-mortality. And Orson Pratt gave a talk about this, and I have it in my uh, notes below, and he explained this. Uh, they, referring to the sons of God, they composed a hymn, and this is Orson Pratt, they composed a hymn, and if we could have a copy of it, we should no doubt find that it was a hymn in relation to the construction of the earth and its future habitation by those spirits in the form of men. I would like to see that hymn myself, and if we had it, we'd get our choir here to sing it. I think it would impart a good deal of information to us, and perhaps we would shout for joy again. Thank you, Brother Pratt, for that thing, and I have the full quote there, and it's from Journal of Discourses. So we have hit the bottom at the Christ quotient. So uh, some of the things, you know, there were ancient Christians. Um, like I said, that was, that's one of the things what the Book of Mormon does is restore that knowledge that everyone had faith in Christ, and it was just the whole pattern throughout. And we have a little bit of a hiccup with the, uh, the Mosaic dispensation, but uh, if we had the complete record, we'd see, they'd see that we're... Uh, they're really practicing Christians all the way back to the days of Adam. Another thing is the uh, point is that just because someone is suffering, it doesn't mean that they're doing something wrong. Um, this is what Joseph Smith taught. This is from the Joseph Smith Manual, uh, page uh, 253. I explained concerning the coming of the Son of Man and also that it was a false idea that the saints will escape all judgments whilst the wicked suffer. Uh, Christ uh, reigning on the just and unjust, and his son on the just and unjust. For all flesh is subject to suffer, and the righteous shall hardly escape. Still many of the saints will escape, for the just shall live by faith. Yet many of the righteous shall fall, fall prey to disease, to pestilence, etc., by reason of the wickedness of the flesh, and yet be saved in the kingdom of God. So that it is an unhallowed principle to say that such and such have transgressed because they have been preyed upon by disease or death. For all flesh is subject to death. And the Savior said, Judge not, lest ye be judged. Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith Manual, page 21. Um, another idea is that suffering is instrumental, that it has a perf, uh, purpose to it. Remember Elder Bednar a couple of years ago gave a talk, and he said that, you know, the Scriptures don't talk about the word, uh, talk about us being tested. They talk about try, examine, and prove, and I put a link to this. Keep that in mind as you're reading the book of Job. It's not a test. Try, examine, and prove. And how well does Job uh, endure all this? Uh, the, uh, another thing to think about how Christ uh, suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, well, that was greater suffering than Job experienced. And that's who Job, Job's a uh, symbol of Christ and his suffering pointed to Christ's atonement. Uh, another thing is that um, you have all these uh, questions about God's love, God's omnipotence, and why we have evil exist. But all these difficulties and problems and questions that we have are resolved in Jesus Christ and his miracle in the atonement. And that is the point. Coming up, our rendezvous with Isaiah. Get prepared.